Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, smash, not smash, throw your meat at the like button. Meat wave at your like button. No, not your meat. Don't don't use your meat to hit the like button. Anyway, um, so there is this uh, interesting you know, battle that is going on uh, which I love to put uh, my meat in it. I mean, my, 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 my two cents, five cents in it. And it all start off with... Um, uh, my dear friend over at History Legends. Uh, so, Alex actually made this video uh, debunking uh, the myth of the meat wave. Uh, I mean, human wave attack. Uh, this is human wave thingy. Uh, you can see, you know, he's very pissed off. The human wave attack, you know, has been always been used. You no, know, every time uh, Russia is making some kind of uh, attack, you know, the Ukrainians always say that it's you no, know, is human wave. You no, know, it's always human wave and. As if that uh, these Russians have no brains, uh, not realizing that Ukrainian and Russian are basically the same ethnic people. Uh, so if one side is so stupid, the other side is just as stupid. So, so I I don't buy it. And uh, basically, if you sh you should have watched this, I think this is a extremely epic video. I mean, even even our dear friend over at Willy OAM agrees. You know, he he basically you know says the same thing. Is like Ukraine would. Would, would release footages of uh, their war crimes but not about the human wave that will you know, aid them in their PR so you no know, this actually is a very very good point and uh, it was a 20 over minute video by by my dear friend here uh, and uh, he it is actually a very very good video and uh, this triggers uh, people from the pro-Ukrainian side clearly of course and and this turned out to be uh, Mr. Uh, Peter Griffin, uh, I mean, uh, Ryan Beth, Beth and, um, and he actually uh, says, he have a re response, and I, I personally have not watched this video, so we're going to do the live reaction together, and uh, and we're going to see uh, and uh, what he's going to say, and of course, uh, yeah, let's see what is being said. People reached out to me to talk about a video another YouTuber did on how there was no evidence of what he referred to as meat wave attacks or mm -hmm. human wave attacks by Russia in Ukraine. Now, I'm at the Tampa... Wait, throw your meat at your uh, at the like button. I, I mean, the meat wave at the like button. We, we need to destroy the like button. Oh. ...airport right now and about to fly to Long Island for a podcast, but I can probably knock this video out before my flight. So you've noticed I've never... Oh. I actually thought that was a green screen, and I, I I thought that that was that was a green screen, and then he was like, "No, doing this very interesting uh, um, video with a very very interesting background." Uh, so, but it's actually real. But the lighting is cool. Man. Once called anything a meat wave attack, and there's a reason for that. It's not a military term. It's more like a shorthand emotional term designed to invoke a specific kind of response, and this which is called propaganda. Yeah, he agreed with history legends. So particular YouTuber made an interesting case that Russia wasn't using meat wave. He has a name. Wave attacks or human wave attacks. Now, I kind of have a policy that I don't take food out of the mouths of other YouTubers. I believe that there is enough cake for everybody to eat. Don't worry, because uh, the I'm also taking the food out of his mouth. <laughs> And uh, and to feed myself, but you know, yeah. Let's let's go on. And someone doesn't have to lose in order for me to win, but there's a little bit of nuance to the subject that I want to shed light on. To start, I have to say that now is the third year of the war in Ukraine, and things change. What was the case at the start of the war isn't necessarily the case now. A good example is Russia's good use point. of the battalion tactical group, which is a very yep. Russian way of doing things. Russia's army is highly artillery focused and highly mechanized. Mm -hmm. Why? Because mm -hmm. during the Cold War, the Soviets thought they would be operating in a nuclear chemical environment. And soldiers are much better protected from seaburn or chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear seaburn. threats when they're in a vehicle. It also allows for a cheaper army. If you're going to have an army that's mm -hmm. mostly conscripts with professional educated officers, mm -hmm. you can kind of get away with not having mid-level non-commissioned officers in a mechanized army. The whole idea is that you use artillery to just pummel the enemy and then probe until you find a gap and then you send as much Soviet steel through that gap as mm -hmm. possible. And if you're mechanized, 
you really never have to go that far away from your base of fire, which is your infantry fighting vehicle, your BMP. Mm -hmm. So you really don't need the kind of school intensive and expensive non-commissioned officers who can fire and maneuver independently. Mm -hmm. So one of Russia's post-Cold War inventions was the Battalion Tactical Group, which took the kind of artillery that's normally found in a brigade and they placed it in the battalion. Now, this was supposed to work in theory, but in practice, during Russia's invasion of Ukraine, mm -hmm. they just didn't have the logistical lift to get all of the rounds out to all of the individual artillery pieces at the battalion level. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, how? How do he know that? I, I have totally never come across any information about the, 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 the logistical, uh, logistical problems that is faced at the battalion level. How do you get even this kind of information? Uh, um, um, I press X on that for doubt. So when Russia invaded Ukraine, it had artillery in its battalion tactical groups. Around, I believe, summer of last year, they started removing artillery from battalion tactical groups and started putting them in artillery regiments that were just easier to feed logistically. So if you're talking about how the Russian army fights, and you're referencing battalion tactical groups from papers two years ago, you're using knowledge that is two years old. I asked Stable Diffusion AI to generate me. So I, I firstly, I personally, I have no idea how he get in the information regarding the Russian change in doctrine, where they move uh, artillery from a battalion level all the way to the regimental level. Well, or uh, what would you, what you would call a regiment is actually a battalion. So, okay, that's a bit weird. Okay, so maybe he's referring to a brigade level or division level. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if that's the case. I, I'm not sure how you come to that conclusion. But of course, you can as you can see, I don't subscribe to this. So I do not know. I don't watch Ukraine war, no, uh, outside my free time because uh, there's too much Ukraine war for me. It's get, get a bit boring. So, so no, I, I, should, talk, I should talk like this, no? So it's a bit... Yeah. Let me let's just continue to watch. An image of World War II era American Army soldiers. I, I feel like skipping gear. this part because it's, this is unrelated this. to. Look at this picture okay. from Fort Belvoir, Virginia in May of 1941. Mm -hmm. Now, technically, this was before the U.S. Army entered the war, but it's al almost a year later they're using a different kind of helmet. Mm -hmm. The point is that tactics and equipment change during a conflict. Mm -hmm. So what you think you know might not necessarily be correct a few months from now. Okay, yeah. so what does all this have to do with meat wave attacks? Exactly. Well, the Royal United Services Institute for Defense and Security Studies published a paper last year titled Meat Grinder, Russian Tactics in the Second Year of Its Invasion of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And they categorized Russian infantry into four types. Yes. Disposable, line, assault, and specialized. Huh. And I think that's where this term meat wave originated. I think people are still reading the paper, which, don't get me wrong, is a good paper. Mm -hmm. But it may or may not be accurate today. True. Now, so I think because the uh, disposable and a uh, line, uh, it sounds a lot like the how the Wagner operates, and um and arguably uh, Wagner private military contractors is not the Russian military, the Russians do not throw uh, men in that way, uh as far as I can tell because uh it is a country's military they ha they are accountable to the families sending them on suicide missions is a little bit difficult, you know, unless you get the whole freaking battalion killed off, you're going to get a lot of court trials and martial, court martials uh, even during the war or after the war because people will start to make noise and they're going to uh, submit complaints uh, because like I said, you know, this, this this is not a private military contractor uh, kind of thing. They, they And they are not using prisoners. They're using uh, conscripts or you no know, mobilized troops and these are people who no, they're going to have a vote and then they're going to make a lot of noise. So, yeah, that's that's just my interpretation of it. One of the problems faced by both Russia and Ukraine on the front lines is the predominance of ISR, or intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Mm -hmm. Over the past year, Russia has figured out how to use drones like their Orlan 10 to do spotting. And Ukraine is using commercial off-the-shelf drones for spotting. So it's pretty much impossible for an adversary to build up anything more than a company in order to conduct an attack. There's mm, just true. too much thermal yep, and visual exactly. fingerprint that builds up when you put a lot of troops in one place, and that is a recipe for an artillery or rocket strike. 100%. So that's that why is we're totally seeing true. Russia launch these strange, unsupported frontal attacks with four vehicles or six vehicles. 
many of which get destroyed. Mm -hmm. And I think that people are, who are trying to explain this can do it in one of two ways. They can try to explain the non-permissive environment doesn't allow for a buildup of a decisive number of troops, so then they, yeah. they just That's exactly what we always talk about over TP DPA now, as well. The meat wave in this case is it's usually in a can. And I think it's just a shorthand way of explaining this is why Russia is conducting unsupported frontal attacks. No, 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 no. Uh, in command and conquer terms, we call this tank rush. <laughs> so tank rush is not a meat wave, no. So is unsupported frontal attack is also uh, weird. I mean. So if you have armored vehicles with infantry fighting vehicle with fire support with tanks and that is still unsupported, then are we referring to artillery systems and airstrikes? So isn't that what the Ukrainians have been doing the entire counteroffensive? Oops. Now, oh. this might change. With America's Congress in deadlock, artillery aid to Ukraine has slowed to only what Europe can provide. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean that Ukraine will necessarily run out of artillery ammunition, but it could mean that batteries will hoard artillery for only the most important fire missions. And when that day comes that Russia can build up a company or battalion level attack because Ukraine just can't service those targets, that's going to be a real problem. So and, and Ukraine will have to use unsupported frontal attacks without you know, artillery or airstrike support and that would be a what that would be a okay so let's let's continue so is russia conducting foot-based human wave attacks like wagner used to do in bakhmut maybe I mean, they certainly were at one point but that might have changed sometime last year so i think this idea of meat wave attacks is an idea that was popularized by one article and got traction and it may or may not be true a year later in the current operational environment. Thank you guys so much for watching. And that's a fantastic video, actually, from uh, Ryan Macbeth. Uh, I think that is a very, very good video, although it is, the title is a bit misleading. And, uh, and I think it does go a bit uh, of a distance uh, in terms of going one big round to try to explain the point. But uh, point is well taken. Uh, I think is that's pretty good. I think that is a, a very good reaction video, and uh, that is really you no know, nothing much. I actually object, and I think this is he did a very very good job in being very objective, and uh, so uh, so thank you uh, for that video. I guess uh, for Ryan, and uh, for that I will just press a subscribe. You no, know, because good job. So anyway, uh, I, I I'm not sure about this. I, uh, uh what is this oh i think he's he's promoting something so anyway and then came a very weird stuff we have a reaction to a reaction to a reaction which is actually by military and history uh a channel which i totally wasn't aware of and um so um maybe because it was too generic the name so military and history which everything is military and history so so but he straight away right mid attack exists and this is going to be tasty because uh, he straight away just tell us what he's, what he's thinking. And he's he responds to history legend and Ryan Macbeth. And uh, this is DPA reacting to military and history responding to history legend and Ryan Macbeth, which was reacting to history legend. Good job. And uh, anyway, so let's, uh, let's watch this and see how this goes. Ago, fellow YouTuber History Legends made a video according to which the term meat wave attack is a propaganda term used to smear the Russian armed forces. Fellow YouTuber Ryan Macbeth responded to it and said no meat wave attacks are unsupported small attacks, frontal attacks. I think both of them are wrong. Meat wave attacks actually exist, but both of them misunderstand the term. And I'll show you how and why in this video. Okay. So uh, we're going to skip the basically intro. basically where the whole argument of his video is resting upon to say that MIV attacks mean human wave attacks. The first two thirds of his video, he takes examples of historic human wave attacks and shows with references that those human wave attacks never existed and were used as a propaganda term. I have no clue about the exact events of the historic um, exact details of the... Then how do you know that he's wrong? Um, like... The premise was that history legend is wrong. 
So, uh, but anyway, let's let's react further. Those historic events, so I can't say anything about it. Yeah, and then he goes over it. to um, assaults, mass assaults by the Ukrainians and by the Russians, and that supposedly those t this term is only used for Russian attacks. We can watch the last few minute, the le last minute. Uh, I, I, I want to correct that as well. Uh, it's not only used on Russian attacks. The Russians also do use this term on the Ukrainians, but it's much lesser much much lesser and uh, it actually mainly reacts uh, relates to the change of strategy and tactics during the ukrainian counter offensive in uh, last year 2023 uh, because the ukrainians was doing this nato style offensive with the armored vehicle the tank rush and you know, all this uh, attack which then uh, resulted in massive losses in armored vehicles the ukrainians eventually gave up on that entire strategy and they went into small squad uh, operations they basically they basically use only infantry based attack to you know storm the front and it would it would it proved to be much more successful because uh it's much more harder to spot them much more harder to hit them even though they are a softer target and uh, the ukrainians are also you know using the artillery uh, drones to support their operations uh, to support this infantry assault uh, which is proved to be much much more successful the armored vehicles and the tanks was then used as a fire support uh in the rear, they are firstly only used as the transport system, send the infantry up front to a place where they can actually unload and then go through the forest lines to head towards the uh, the Russian entrenchments. And then the armored vehicles just basically withdraw out from the front line. So, um, yeah, so it's not only used on the Russians. The Russians also use it on the Ukrainians, but uh, much more rare. <laughs> here where he mentions another ukrainian attack and then comes to the conclusion that the term is a propaganda term used to smear the russian armed forces as barbarians so does that i'm going to skip this to because we're not going to watch uh, history a year ago andrei morosov also known as murz was one of the prominent russian mill bloggers pro-russian he fought in the i think the luhansk people's republic's army he was one of the pro-Russian supporting this war, and he mentions here meat assaults continue when he's talking about Wagner's attacks on Bakhmut. This is the first example I found. I'm pretty sure there are earlier examples. Here it is, it is this term is used. No, 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 no. You, you don't you don't go. I'm sure that there is more examples. Either you have the example or you don't have the example because this is a react video from him. And uh you if you want to rebuild and basically say Two massive channels, uh, one half a million over, another one eight hundred thousand over. In terms of size, they have no. I I mean, Dennis Davidov have more, but no. Uh, there is some level of credibility, and uh, and they are also well known to you know, to be seen as a at least no subject expert in uh, certain things. And then, especially I think Ryan Macbeth was very successful in his shots, and he he always break down all these uh military nuggets that is proved to be really really popular so you know when you come in uh suddenly to say that oh, these guys are wrong then you better have evidence and wagner is already something uh some, is a subject that i believe i think history legend also mentioned about it but it is clearly mentioned even uh by ryan Macbeth already he did mention that really oam interviewed people that also can co corroborate that and even on the dpa super panel we uh with history legend really oam we also talk about this and and it was clear that the wagner forces did use the prisoners as a as a signal you no know, it's a human signal they m march them forward and uh, try to tell them to attack a certain direction and then to draw fire and this is actually not uh, no, it's not even a human wave attack per se because that's actually a legitimate military strategy. In fact, even when I was in the military, we do this thing called combat patrol. And what the, what's the point of the combat patrol is to draw fire. That's what it is. <laughs> the, so it was pretty, pretty depressing when I first know I, I should change the camera. So, you know, uh, when I was in the military, the, when I first learned what's the purpose of combat patrol, I was shocked because you have to understand Singapore fight in jungle warfare because we are in you know, a tropical region. And basically in jungle warfare, even you have uh, air superiority and satellites, you can't really tell where the enemy is. That's where combat patrol comes in. Uh, you you have a squad, you know, going through a uh, potential enemy territory or potential places where we want to scout and then if you hit an ambush or you got attacked then the enemy is there is there then then they form further plans 
uh, for that particular grid square, uh, knowing that the enemy is there. So basically, that is what the Wagner was doing with these prisoners. They are not going to send in uh, their experienced troops to go and do combat patrol because often they're not uh, ambushers will always successfully kill off everyone um so you no know, uh in in my when i was in the military they they did tell us very straightforwardly that if you hit an ambush the high chance is that you'll be dead so the that's why you no know, when we the 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 the, the drill that we do is that the moment you hit an ambush for example you hit a hit a, a trip flare whatnot the first thing is you charge at where the fire is coming in and you just charge through taking a rifle with bayonet you just charge and hope for the best so that is the training that we got there is a basic military training that is of course you no know, um may not be applied applicable to different forces that is on uh, different type of missions so but saying that you no know, the sending the what the wagner was doing with the prisoners is not unusual so i'm just saying you no know, particularly you no know, the prisoners are not really you know uh care about by the wagner forces so by a Russian, pro-Russian mill block. Besides, so we jump. also have uh, Buenkoa also mentioning meat assaults, but this time they mention Ukrainian ones already in March 19, as he claims that it's only used for the Russians. He claims that in his video. Here we see them, the a pro-Russian mill blogger using it for the Ukrainians. This is wait, 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 wait. I want to go back to uh, when was this post? March nine, March 19. So March 19 was uh, March 19, 2023 was when the Ukrainians were doing the counteroffensive, and I believe this is still pretty early. Uh, and uh, this was an attack coming from Urikiv towards Tokmak, and uh, so mid assault. But they did they did put the dog here. They did put the dog here. So um, I think during this time, I believe this is when the Ukrainians was just storming during using the NATO tactic where no the tactic was uh, so like i should show my face bigger so the tactic the the the, the nato tactic was that the ukraine forces will attack the front they'll send in the leopard tanks the leopard tanks will move in the front and then what will happen is that the russians will spot the right the leopard tank and they'll freak out and then they will run away from their position that was the nato tactic so and um yeah so so that turns out to be mid wave and uh but of course that is not the mid wave and clearly they put dog here and this is not a claim of mid wave as far as i read this thing if let's say this is my reporting when i was looking at this i will not report this as a mid wave i will not say that the russians claim that ukrainians are doing mid wave because of the dog here is basically saying the ukrainians are sending a lot of forces in a single direction to try to attack so i don't think this is actually a legitimate uh a way to put it uh it's not evidence so 19 as he claims that it's only used for the russians he claims that in his video here we see them the a pro-russian mill blogger using it for the ukrainians this is from uh, this is also from Ryad Ryadov news uh, i had to screenshot it here because it showed corpses but here we have meat assaults that according to the this pro-russian mill blogger are happening by the ukrainians it's from may 25 and from then on that term got much more popular especially from june on it was used for the ukrainians throughout their counteroffensive. this term is used by both sides uh, and it's at least used for one full year uh, and initially the first example i found was that it was used by russian pro-russian mill bloggers for the russian armed forces or for wagner in this context so while this correction the ukrainian counter offensive did not happen in march i just remembered so, so, I, so i paused the video when i went to check, fact check myself so in march april march thing is still doing the bakhmut offensive and the one that is already key if that's the case, fighting towards Tokmak, yeah, that's it's kind of weird. Let me let me check let me back fact check myself again. So I fact check myself. So I going back to the archive uh, in DPS mapping. So this is the March uh twentieth uh, mapping. So the March twentieth mapping we do have uh information uh that the Ukrainian forces was attacking towards uh, uh in the south of Novo Danilivka and um uh, and the day before there was fighting reported towards Nestorianka as well as uh towards Robotine also as well and uh, this was the initial uh, phase of the initial first try you know by the Ukrainians to try to attack uh 
towards uh, in this sector and uh, it, it turned out really badly it didn't went well they also attacked towards Bilokoyaya Cherifni and uh, south of uh, Novo Denilevka and Novo uh, and towards Nesterenka and the one in Nesterenka I do remember that it didn't really do very well um and they, they give up give give up on that and then the the whole thing just went on a pause as you can see by uh, april 28 there is no change in terms of the front line the front line remains almost exactly the same which is why after that you know they regroup and then they actually do one massive punch uh that is that is the june uh, counter offensive so we go back to to, to listen well, to this what he's time they mentioned ukrainian ones or meat wave I, attack I, I pressed the wrong button so so we did pro Russian supporting this. So we got to jump, 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 jump. To the pro on that term got much more popular for the Ukrainians throughout their counteroffensive. This term is used by both sides, uh, and it's at least used for one full year. Uh, and initially, the first example I found was that it was used by Russian pro Russian mill bloggers for the Russian armed forces or for Wagner in this context. So while this mm -hmm. is not true that yep. he claims it's only when the Russians do it, I think the whole problem is that he assumes that meat attacks are equal to human wave attacks. In this regard, I need to reference. So meat attack is not human wave attack. Uh, think about it uh do press the like button with your mid attack ryan mcbeth's video by the way an example of how you can uh, kindly respond to a video you disagree with i hope i'll be as good as he is at some point in this shit <laughs> shit agreeing with others when i make a video about it and he his theory is that the origin origin of it is this article by the royal united services institute russian uh, where it's talking about a meat grinder i think he barely misses the target here as well because not only is this not the origin as we can see from murts here who did it earlier we have this here in may murts already did it in february talking about meat attacks but it should be close to self-explanatory this is why i don't understand the confusion we have meat so i just want to add my own point the the first time human wave was being mentioned from my memory uh i think is my vague memory tells me probably in the battle of Bound moon um I don't remember it to be used much before then. Like, yeah, hardly. It was during the Battle of Mahmud that it was first, I think, first mentioned. Because even when the Russians were attacking Nosevarodonetsk and then attacking Popasna, uh, Le Battle of Liman, uh, even Nova China, uh, not really. We don't really see that uh, being mentioned in that way because the Wagner was fighting. Uh, you know, after Popasna, touring to the China region, going up to Bakhmut, it was pretty much a still a uh, very, um, how to say, it was still pretty much um very uh, tactical, uh, technical. Uh, they didn't really do the kind of a wave kind of like you know like you no know, send sending combat patrols sort of thing. It was during the Battle of Bakhmut, uh, during when they are really storming the city. That's when they started to abuse. The manpower i think that is when i started to really see that happening i think before that it wasn't really a thing i don't think uh that was really much of a thing uh before that yeah so so he he's pretty much more or less you no know, correct in this in that sense to grind up we have russian mill bloggers talking about being used as meat they also we have an example here of a pro-russian mill blogger in english and they are from Jen from June 17, 2022. So from last uh, two years ago, the first year of the war, where they this supposedly captured military officer of the armed forces told that they are being sent to slaughter and they are being used for meat. Now it in my mind, it was always self-explanatory that a meat attack is an attack with meat. That's why we have a meat grinder. That's why soldiers are being seen as meat. And this means it's infantry. A meat assault is an assault only or mainly with infantry with barely any mechanized support or no mechanized support at all. That explains why it was mentioned in Bakhmut. Nobody seriously claimed that in Bakhmut 50,000 Wagnerites were marching shoulder to shoulder into the city. Every video... Wait, 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 wait. Of course not. Of, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course not. 
of course not going to be that case but there is there's an important point that he raised is basically you no know, infantry attack without uh, sufficient mechanized or armored support which is exactly what i talked about uh, in terms of the ukrainian uh, counter offensive where they changed the tactic away from the one uh, that the nato have suggested them to do and where else the ukrainians from that point onward they first they use small squads uh, to to attack and then they actually progressively learn how to use uh, their infantry fighting vehicles and tanks in a more efficient way so which is why by today's age which is why ryan Macbeth also mentioned you know the the war tactic and strategy changes over time and that's why we are seeing now the ukrainians are a lot more better at combining infantry with support of uh, armored vehicles um especially when they use the Bradleys and uh, they use the Leopard tanks and whatnot. They is a lot more efficient, but that doesn't mean that uh, they cannot be destroyed as well. Because so, you know, the enemy, of course, will hit back and, and you know, this, despite using it correctly or the or more efficiently or more effectively, they still can get destroyed. So, uh, but definitely the, the point is there. I definitely see the point what he's trying to push we saw from that were small groups at most maybe 20 men but they were only infantry we barely saw any tanks in the city we saw some but the majority of those attacks were infantry and we have analysis in the past from last year about the wagner tactics that they used that initially their first wave in their attacks were expendable troops that's also what's mentioned here in the rusi report we we using conscript soldiers as a first unit to identify enemy targets and then better equipped units follow up so but the essential part is those each one of these waves were using infantry only so a meat attack is not a human wave attack it's an infantry heavy or infantry only attack because it only uses meat as we as the same a meat grinder is not grinding up human waves it's just grinding up infantry it's grinding okay, wait, 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 wait. so the so the there's a lot of points that, of course, corroborates what I've already said. Uh, the said is true, but I have to also qualify in the sense that in urban warfare, why urban warfare is dreaded by all militaries around the world. No one, no military love urban warfare. Everybody hates it for one reason because you can't use armor effectively in an urban setting, and and uh, so even if you look at you know how the Israeli was attacking. Uh, uh, against Hamas within the Gaza Strip, you can f you you also find find that the armor also do struggles a lot, uh, where the where the Hamas militants are able to constantly you know flank these armored vehicles because armored vehicles are just not very suitable in terms of urban warfare. It does provide protection, but it also is a uh, you no know, massive uh, magnet for all sort of RPGs and missiles and uh, and whatnot. So. So the so which is why you no know, urban warfare, if you look at even the Battle of Mariupol, you look at the, how the Chechens was fighting in the Mariupol region, it's the same thing. It's very infantry heavy. And um when they do have the space to use uh, armored vehicles, they do send in the BMP or whatnot to help to provide fire support against certain uh, sniper targets. Uh because there are snipers you no know, all over the place and um armored vehicles is the best weapon against snipers. So but they still need the space. It's you if you look at the battle of Maripo, Maripo is a pretty much a low pretty low rise generally speaking and there's a lot of uh, space so they, they are able to use the armored vehicles much better but in terms of Bakhmut um, uh, it's still usable I guess but of course no the, the Wagner have their own way of their own tactics and then, um, yeah that's so, so that's a more of a Wagner thing to say Russian tactics yeah Wagner is Russian uh, so and the his definition for meat grinder um, to grind the infantry is not correct the concept of meat grinder is simply grind manpower. It doesn't matter how you come. You come. You can come in a tank, a Bradley, an armored vehicle, BMP, even no self-propelled artillery. You know whatever. The meat grinders meaning simply is to kill off as many men as possible. That is the concept of a meat grinder. It's nothing to do with infantry. So that I disagree lining up personnel. So this needs to be understood, and I think this is a confusion by both sides. As said, um, I think. As, as um, politely as I can say, I think both of them are wrong here because both of them misunderstood the term. If I no 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 no, two of them are, one of them are wrong here. Uh, I don't want to say who. I see the context both with meat grinder with soldiers being called as meat.
it is clear to me that meat assaults are assaults without heavy heavy weaponry and we see the russians starting to use that term in the ukrainian counteroffensive after the first initial attacks with heavy weaponry by for instance the 47th mechanized brigade failed when we saw the pictures of them of huge amounts of uh, armored vehicles standing in, a, in an open field being knocked out or destroyed after that the ukrainians switched over to small infantry tactic tactics and that's the moment when the russians start using the term meat attacks by the ukrainians in that as well as in so so we corroborate each other as well so you see, see it is just not my personal observation but also you know military and history did also uh, witness the same issue uh the same transition uh, on the ukrainian side so that's good in their mind it was an attack with meat no longer with mechanized armed forces if you like this video give it a thumbs up i'll link thumbs both up. of the videos i referenced to in and the to, comments and if you're new here i would like to so i uh, not going to listen to the whole outro i'm gonna, of course going to press subscribe you know press back so uh, there are certain points that I disagree. I think the mass majority of what he say, I agree. So, but uh, there's a certain definition uh, I disagree, uh, particularly the concept of what is a meat grinder. So that is, I think I, I have a big issue with that because meat grinder is not about killing infantry. It's simply about killing manpower. So, and uh, this video is really new. It's only two hours ago uh, as per the recording. So anyway, uh, so this is my reaction to the reactions, reaction to the reaction, to the reaction of what, of the claims of Russia using meat wave. Do you get it? Uh, let me repeat again. This is DPA's reaction to military and history's reaction to Ryan Macbeth, uh reaction to history legends, reaction to the claims of Russia using meat wave or human wave attack and uh i just thought that you know everything just got very jumbled up because <laughs> military and history basically took a totally different direction and it's like you no know, jumble up the the entire idea of the entire premise of what history legend is talking about and uh he went into the you no know, the semantics and uh which is why i have to come to the semantic meat grinder is not about the infantry it's about just killing manpower anyway thank you for watching do press the like button subscribe uh yeah no use your meat and smack that white that, that that like button and of course do check out of course these uh various uh great youtubers and uh content creators uh ryan Macbeth, military and history of course history legends and uh thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next update